Hello, welcome to new video. And today I have a small sample file with uh, two floors. And actually all the elements which are MEP elements are in this rabbit link, MEP. So if I isolate, everything is rabbit link. And all walls, I have two different types of the walls are in this architectural model. And also, while I was modeling these uh, sample walls, uh, I did use a different thickness, so that would be important for the openings later. I will show you. Uh, I have two different floors, and on those floors I have a different layout of those elements, so we will see how successful this script is. And uh, some elements have insulation, some elements does not have insulation. And this is a script 01. Maybe sometimes in the future, I think it will be good if I create a SQL for this script. Because I think sometimes probably it will be better if we just group a lot of small openings to uh, one, one big opening. So maybe sometimes in the future we will have addition to this script. So if I run this script, user interface is, I think, very simple. So right away we can choose category for the elements. So we can create openings just for the cable trays, just for the ducts or pipes, or we can just select all and we will create the openings for all of them. Let's try, for example, to go with cable trays. And we can say that sometimes I think, uh, yes, for example, for those small pipes, uh, sometimes you don't need to create an openings because if you have a pipe which is 25 mm or one inch, I think that those small installations you can drill on the site, there is no a need for, for them to create an openings. But you can either say over here zero or you can say half a meter. Uh, it's up to you, you have that possibility in this script. Over here I will leave it uh, to be 25, but for the cable trace this does not make any sense. Which link model we will use to retrieve the elements? Of course we will use this MEP. And uh, we can also create an offset. So uh, over here we will have a round opening. So for the round elements we will have round opening. Uh, for rectangular elements, we will have rectangular opening. But moreover, we can create an offset between the opening and the element. Uh, at first, I will leave this to be zero, and then uh, I will change so you can see the difference. Set value. And script is very fast, but over here, I think we have like, uh, I mean, for all installation, we have maybe 50 openings. So maybe that is why it's so fast. So uh, we have now all, all openings for uh, cable trays and also from both sides of the walls we have this uh, border. So we have the border from uh, internal and external side of the wall. Of course we can easily, if we don't want to have that, we can just turn off the visibility and this is like type uh, properties. So if you turn off border for a uh, for one element, it will turn off the border for all rectangular wall openings. Okay, and now let's see on this example. So if we turn off this border for a moment, just to show you that offset. So basically we did type zero for the offset and we don't have any offset between the opening and uh, this element. Also, if we isolate this wall, we can see that we have those openings in the wall. Now I will run uh, again this script, but this time I will enter some distance for, for that offset. Just to see a difference, let's go again with cable trace. Uh, we will retrieve the elements for from this link. And for example, let's yeah, we, we can use this 50 mm as an offset. Uh, again, I will turn off the border. And I will show it a little bit better. 
And now you can see that over here we have that offset. Again, we can turn on visibility for the borders. And let's say now that we want to have openings for all elements in our models. And now I want to run the script for all elements. Let's skip openings for the elements which have a diameter less than 50 mm. I want to use this file and let's keep this offset of 50 mm. So, okay, now our round elements have this round border, rectangular elements have this rectangular border. Of course, also for this uh, round elements, you can turn off the visibility and it will turn off visibility of that border on all openings. I, I will undo that. And you can see that actually uh, those openings follow quite well this, this uh, location of the element. And also you can see that opening uh, did include this uh, insulation. So we have um, element diameter, then we have insulation, then we also have a uh, offset and all of that included in this wall opening. Also, we can see what is the situation on the ground floor. Okay. And over here, we can see that uh, the script did uh, skip those elements which have a uh, diameter less than 50 mm. So over here, we have 100 and let's say 30 and over here we have 35 so the script recognize that and filter out those small elements over here i still have a problem so in situation when you have and we can see the difference also if we check this second floor so if uh, the elements have some random angle but that angle it's normal to the wall everything will be okay because we will rotate this element uh, according to the direction of the element. But over here you can see that uh, actually opening is uh, rotated according to the element. But actually uh, over here we have a problem because direction of the ball and direction of uh, the element is not the same. So over here I would probably delete this opening and create some custom opening. Okay, and I didn't find any, uh, let's say, quick way to fix this. Uh, I mean, the script will need to uh, calculate uh, interception uh, width of those two elements, and I didn't have enough time to deal with that. So maybe in some improvement video, I will also include that as a feature. But in all other places, I think that we are okay. In those situations over here, I think it would be better if we can recognize uh, this as a situation and create one big opening instead of multiple openings for all the elements. But overall, I think that uh, this script is it's quite good. Let's check once more that ground floor. Uh, those elements uh, over here and over here are just for the test. So if there is no collision between the element and the wall, I just wanted to see that the script will not create uh, unnecessary openings. Okay. Uh, again, if I run the script and the size of this element, it's 35. So, okay, if we undo this previous run and now, if I run the script and if I want to create opening for all elements, no matter what is the size, I will here place the zero. Again, I will retrieve uh, the elements from this link. And let's say, for example, that we don't want to have offset set value. And now, again, if we go to this ground floor, you will see that we, we will have opening for every element. So even for these very, very small elements, we will have an opening. 
again if we don't want to see those borders we can turn off the visibility but actually the, the opening will remain you can see those small openings over here okay and also uh, I didn't show you but now we can also test that so over here we have some openings and maybe that is better to test on this first floor uh, I think this wall um, yeah let, let's let's test it with this wall so at the moment when we did run the script uh, the area of the wall it's 18.5 but before we did run the script okay uh, the area was 19.6 so uh, when we run the script let's run it again so all elements zero mp and we don't want to have offset so now uh, area uh, when we did run the script uh, decreased to uh, 18.5 so those openings are really openings it's not just some visibility trick okay and that's it for this script now i will show you dynamo okay this is the script i will run the script just one more time uh, in order to have results so of course looking from the distance this is the input zone related to our user interface or here we need to read all those inputs uh, over here we will read and set uh, parameters we will rotate the elements and in the end uh, we will delete also some elements let's let's start from the input zone so if you did look my previous videos you probably know this part over here so i have drop down data in order for user to select the category also in in that case if we want to ignore some dimensions i did uh, put a note over here that uh, that dimension it will be related just for the round elements because in most cases you will use just that for the pipes also uh, over here we need to choose uh, that uh, rabbit link model and at the end uh, there is a question uh, for the user to choose that number regarding the offset everything we will deliver to the multiple input form then we need to read all, all those inputs okay and uh, now uh, because we have four different possibilities what user can choose now we, we we need to retrieve that information and to process that information in order to uh, retrieve the elements from desired category so if the user chose all we will took all categories if the user chose some category we will proceed just with that one category then we need to find uh, a list of collisions we need to know uh, where is the that point center point of collision in order to insert our family so now because we know the category which user chose we can retrieve all the elements from the link model uh, for that category and now we can also retrieve the walls which we have in our model and all of that we will uh, check with this interception element and uh, now we will also know uh, how many those collisions we have and now because we know the location of those collisions so we have the lines in order to convert basically the line to the point we will just say okay uh, now i know the length basically of that collision so give me just the point of the middle of that line and i will later use this point for multiple purposes but probably the most important purpose for this point is to uh, present uh, insertion point for uh, for the family okay and now there is a lot of connection but actually if we are just uh, looking the logic over here first of all we need for our family if we isolate our family the space between two borders is actually wall thickness 
so different wall thickness will have uh, different also thickness in the family so in my family i have parameter which is called tw which stands for the thickness of the wall and now the first things which i will do inside my script is to set uh, that uh, wall thickness for my family so i will retrieve a lot of information so here i have a very good python script which i uh, did copy from this link over here and basically for my walls this python script will retrieve all wall thicknesses so i can easily set a uh, wall thickness and over here i will set that parameter over here i have a couple of uh, different things which i need to do in order to uh, set diameter height and width because uh, opening will follow a dimension of the element so this element may be it have a dimension of 200 some other element will have dimension of 400 also for rectangular elements you can have unlimited number of uh, variation in size so at first i want to uh, read uh, existing dimension of the elements but it can happen that, that some elements also have insulation so when you're creating an opening you must also include that insulation dimension and also because we did allow for user to choose that offset value around the opening so basically at the end you must calculate uh, offset and dimension and at, at the end you must also add insulation if the element uh, have insulation over here you will see zero for the elements which does not have insulation and for some uh, elements you will see the value and because you have insulation on basically both sides of the element you need to multiply that value with two okay when we did set all those dimensions uh, for our family now we need to rotate our elements because if we do not rotate the elements all elements will have just one uh, direction defined by family and we can test this so if i for example uh, do not rotate those elements and i will put false for this run and i will also undo that previous run in revit Okay, and let's see what will happen if we do not rotate our elements. Okay, so you can see over here that now uh, if you do not set that rotation, all those wall openings will have uh, same rotations. And basically that is why we will uh, at first determine what is the direction of the element and then we will rotate all uh, wall openings to follow that direction of the element okay when we did rotate the elements now we need to deal with uh, that part which we have over here so if you did say that you want to ignore some elements which have dimension less than whatever you defined over here i will basically create those wall openings so from one side i have walls from the other side i have my family so i can easily create wall openings and at the end uh, because for example you did say that you don't want to have wall openings for elements smaller than 50 i will then recognize which elements have dimension 50 and i will just delete wall openings for all of them uh, probably uh, it it is a better way to immediately recognize that and to not uh, even create those elements but i remember to include that feature at the end of the, my script so for me it was a lot easier now when i create all all elements just to delete uh, the elements which are not necessary and that is the entire script uh, thank you for watching